Good evening and welcome to Face the Issues. I'm Sam Chen. If you've ever watched this show, you know that there is no question we will not address. There is no issue we will not tackle. We will have the debates. We will ask the hard questions. We will get at the truth. But amidst doing all of that, it is so important not to overlook the humanity that rests behind all of these issues, to come together as a community and to celebrate the success of those around us. And that is the heartbeat behind programs like this that we call Community in Focus. And we begin tonight by traveling to the United States Military Academy in West Point and sitting down with Cadet Riley McGinnis. Riley, welcome to Face the Issues. Before we even start anywhere, thank you for your service to this nation. And how are you and your family doing? Hi, great. Thank you for having me here. I was very excited to, to talk today. Um, but my family, they're great. They're back at home in Pennsylvania. I have a little sister at Emmaus High School and an older sister doing some college from home. But um, it's great, great to be here. Great to have this opportunity. Right, well, we are excited to have you. Very glad to hear that your family is doing well, especially amid the chaos that 2020 has brought. Uh, Riley, before we even get into the journey that you've been on, you are at one of the elite schools in our nation, the United States Military Academy at West Point. Not just elite because of its excellent academic and athletic reputation, but because every single person there, you and all of your classmates are committed to serving the United States of America in our fabulous, fantastic military. And let me ask you this, what made you decide on West Point? What made you say, this is the route that I want to take? So I first learned about West Point during my sophomore year of high school. I was a member of the soccer team and I was at a college recruiting clinic. And in the winter is when this clinic took place. And I remember at the end of the clinic, my coach came up to me and said, hey, Riley, the Army coach is interested in you. And I just remember thinking, the what coach? Um, and shortly after, he told me all about West Point and I, I got on the phone, talked to the coach, learned a little bit more about it. At first, I was very hesitant because I'm not from a military family whatsoever. And I just had never thought about joining the military. And I ended up going to a soccer camp for a week. And then what really sold me, though, was when I did an overnight visit and got to live the life of a cadet for two whole days. I got to go to the mess hall, got to go sit in classes and just interact with the cadets and the staff and the faculty. And I really just fell in love for how welcoming everyone was and how everyone was so personable and truly did care about each and every other person's character development and leadership development as a whole. That is, that, that is such a great uh, way of looking at what you're doing, where you are. Uh, if West Point is smart, they will take that clip and put it on the advertisement for their school. Uh, you talked about this camp you went to where you got to be a cadet, and you've been a cadet now for several years at West Point. For those of us who haven't been there, for those of us who, who haven't lived that life, what is a day in the life of a cadet like? The day in the life of a cadet is definitely a lot different than the day in the life of your typical college student. Um, so this year it's a little different because we things have altered mm -hmm. to account for um, some social distancing and coronavirus measures. However, uh, typically I would wake up a little before 6 a.m., uh, go to breakfast. We have formation, which is an accountability uh, formation in the morning where all the cadets come out. You make sure everyone's there, everyone's ready for the day. Uh, then we go to class. And we have class in the morning, and then it goes into our lunch period. All Everyone sits in what's called the, the mess hall. Mm -hmm. We all get to sit there and, and eat together, which is a great break in the day. Then typically after lunch, we have some sort of military development or character development training within our cadet companies with the group of people that we live and train with. And then in the afternoon, we finish up with some classes going in around 4.30, we have typically time for athletics, whether you're on an NCAA team, you're on a club team, or you're just on an intramural team, every cadet's an athlete. So everyone gets to participate in some sort of a sport. And then after that, we have, we have dinner and then evening study period, which is where you prep for the next day of academics. So a very regimented schedule, uh, to your point, certainly not like what we often see uh, at college campuses, at other college campuses. 
Riley, you were recently named first captain. This, uh, you are the brigade commander of the over 4,000 cadets at West Point, and you are only the sixth female to be named first captain in the military academy's history. First of all, congratulations. That is a remarkable honor. Uh, you certainly make your home state and your hometown very proud. What does that mean to you to be serving as first captain? It is truly humbling and such an honor. Uh, I wasn't wasn't expecting it when I first came to West Point whatsoever. I mean, I just came with the the mentality of how can I best develop myself originally, but then it turned into how can I best develop those around me. Um, and I've always been a hard worker, but really I attribute this recognition to everyone who's supported me and mentored me along the way. Um, and now just using this position as a leadership platform to help lead all of the cadets here at West Point in what is arguably one of the toughest years uh, that the Academy has had in a long time. Yeah. You're certainly stepping into this role in a very different and difficult time. Right, you played soccer at West Point, as you mentioned before, uh, before sustaining an injury. What has that journey been like? I mean, certainly cadets are familiar with difficulty, familiar with challenges and hardship. And you have probably more than others you, from an injury as a division one varsity athlete and that journey to now being first captain. What has that journey been like for you and what have you taken away from it? So I've been playing soccer since I was three years old and I have absolutely loved it ever since, which is why I ended up continuing to play all the way through college. And yes, soccer is what ultimately led me to find West Point. And I fell in love with the soccer team and the atmosphere and the coaches and really the leadership opportunities that it gave me throughout my childhood, throughout my high school career, and then getting to have that escape at West Point. And when I came in my plebe year, which is what we call freshmen, um, you're typically the low man on the totem pole at West Point. But when you're on a team, everyone's treated as equal and you all get the opportunity to step up and lead when you're out on the field. So I had a unique experience getting to to do things like that and having those opportunities to lead my peers, lead the upperclassmen. Um, so soccer always has done nothing but prepare me for my career as a cadet, but ultimately as an army officer. And then last year when I had an injury, um, it was definitely, it was devastating because mm -hmm. everyone always wants to be out there playing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had to make a tough decision and ultimately decided to step away for this last year in order to make sure that I was healthy um, and fit and all ready to commission and lead my future platoon and my future soldiers. Um, and in hindsight, it has been a blessing in disguise that it happened because it taught me how to be resilient. It taught me that West Point is a lot more than, than just about the soccer team and that there are leadership opportunities outside of the soccer field because it has led me into the path of getting to have an incredible leadership position this past summer working on the summer detail that I got to do and now ultimately as first captain um, I, I take over all of the the leadership traits and lessons that I learned from soccer and, and just applying it to this new team that I'm now on. Yeah. And Riley let me ask you this as you you're a senior now in your last year What's next for you? I mean, obviously military service, but when you look to your future, what are your hopes and dreams that you are now chasing and pursuing? So um, we get to select a branch and a post. We get to put our preferences in our senior year. Next week is actually branch week where we get to talk to all of the different Army branches uh, that we have the opportunity to select from. And I have not yet made up my mind. I'm keeping an open mind. Uh, and ultimately, I know I'll be happy where wherever I end up. So I'm not exactly sure which one I will pursue. I've been looking into military intelligence and engineers a lot, but um, no, sorry, I don't, I don't know exactly, but I'm looking forward to it next week. Yeah. And to a middle school or high school student who might be watching this and where you were some years ago and saying, that's interesting. I might be interested in pursuing one of the academies. What advice do you have to give to them? I mean, it's a, it's a very, very rigorous process that includes a congressional nomination. What advice would you give the students watching this and saying, I would love to follow in her footsteps and pursue an education and a career in the military? 
So the application process definitely is rigorous and it's a lot of work, but every single second is so worth it. I learned a lot about myself just writing those essays, talking to congressmen in those interviews and just meeting more people that I felt so much more confident um, in myself and in my future moving forward and developed some great skills. But uh, even for those watching this thinking, oh, I never thought that I would be in the military or that's not for me. That's exactly how I felt when my coach first said, hey, you, Riley, you should you should look at West Point. I didn't even know what West Point was. Um, but I think that more people should, male or female, look into the opportunities that the academies have to offer because it's not only an incredible education uh, and a great opportunity to serve your nation, but also the life skills that you learn, you get tested in ways you never thought you would. Um, and you, the relationships that you build are incredible. I feel like I have 40 brothers um, and I'm from a family of all girls and have, being able to say that, that I have people around me that are really like a family to me mm -hmm. um, is something that I don't think you get anywhere other than West Point. So I would definitely say, even if you don't think that it would be for you, try it because you might just be surprised. Uh, and Riley, what I have absolutely admired about this interview time and your answers is it truly reflects, I think, the heart of a leader. And everything you've talked about has been about those around you, about overcoming the challenges that you've faced. Uh, even when we talk about your successes, it has been reflective on the journey and about those who've gotten you there and how you can in turn serve them. And uh, in every walk of life, that's what defines a leader. And so certainly congratulations to you. And West Point is very lucky to have you. And we are very, very much looking forward to what the future brings for you. Uh, last question, obviously the football season is in the air, but assuming the Army-Navy game gets played, um, who should we all be cheering for and what do you think is going to happen in that game? Of course, I got to say, go Army, beat Navy. Not going to root against my team, and they've been training so hard ever since they've they've been here, um, so nothing but great hopes for them. Go Army, beat Navy. Great words to end on. Riley, thank you again for your time. Thank you for your service. Congratulations again, and we look forward to great things from you. Thank you so much.